That show happened in my hometown. I'm from Detroit. Have you guys ever been carjacked? <laughs> I've been COVID tested 147 fucking times. <laughs> Can someone tell me the number of times it takes for something to become a kink? <laughs> I'm starting to enjoy this shit and that's not good. The other day, the last test I got, we were done and I was like, are you sure you don't wanna take my temperature? <laughs> I'm banned from a testing center. <laughs> I hate how much COVID has taken from us, you know? Regardless of who you are, how you identify, COVID has taken something from every single one of us. Like, do you remember how much fun it used to be to make fun of people that went to school online? <laughs> Remember the educational hierarchy that existed before this pandemic hit that we all got the opportunity to enjoy, I think? You know, it used to be people with a bachelor's or make people with an associate's, people with a master's or make fun of people with a bachelor's, and people with a PhD is looking at everybody like, I don't know why any of y'all are laughing, bring me my brunch. <laughs> I'm loving it. I, you know, now it's just, it's just weird though. Yeah, everybody's on, in school online. Now, everybody K through med school <laughs> is a student at DeVry Institute. <laughs> ridiculous, ridiculous. I'm loving where we are right now. Look at us, look at how we've all came together. It's looking like a after party to a Black Lives Matter protest out here. <laughs> you know what that means, right? It's a lot of white people out here. <laughs> Thank you, thank you white people. Thank you for going out and protesting on my behalf because I wasn't doing that shit. <laughs> my black life matters on the couch. <laughs> and I got bored watching everything on Hulu, watching everything on Netflix, you know? So I was happy to see, turn on the news and watch white people getting maced and batoned, pepper sprayed and beat up by the police for once. That was nice. I want a season two of that. <laughs> No, I'm lying. I did, I, I went to one protest. I went to the queer, trans, Black Lives Matter protest in Brooklyn. Very, very large numbers. Very proud of, very proud of what we went out there and did. Especially, we obeyed the pandemic. I didn't see not a single individual out there on those streets without a mask. And that just did wonders for my heart. Do you have any idea how fantastic it feels to finally navigate a queer space without recognizing somebody that I fucked? <laughs> I'm walking down the street hearing voices I recognize. Black Lives Matter, Phil, is that you? Oh, shit. No, that ain't him. I'm taking a turn down another block. I see faces I recognize. I'm pulling people's masks down. Like, did I suck your dick? Oh, no, I didn't suck your dick, my bad. Damn, you look good, though. You want me to? Oh, back up? All right, my bad. The premise basically is like, everything is still very looks-based. We still are up, so we need, like, we gotta have people with, Fucking, like, like, people gotta get naked just to tell people to vote, <laughs> you know? I have gone down a path of like, looking at the funny stuff about historical stuff, cause I've just been so obsessed with it. I mean, I've been reading Malcolm X. I read the autobiography of Malcolm X all over again. Um, basically that Malcolm X is more fuckable than Martin Luther King. <laughs> like, Dr. King had a dream, and that's all fine and good. But after Bullet or Ballad, I had a wet dream. I called, like, one of my good homeboys, and I talked it out, and he was like, you might. Well, he, first of all, I told him the premise of it, and he was like, you wild disrespectful, but it's funny. So <laughs> I'll only know it's, if it's funny if the NAACP calls for me to apologize. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, it's a tough time, though. We living in a tough time. Quarantine, civil unrest in the streets, everybody's divided. You know, it's a tough time for me. You know, this was the most sex I was having with white men ever up until this point, you know? That's different. That's difficult, you know? Like, the country might be divided, but my penis is not. I enjoy the company of a white man every now and again. You know, I, I'm sure I don't, I don't have the haircut that looks like it, but I do. 
I like I like white guys, but I have rules, you know. Like I'm not just gonna date any kind of. When you black, you can't just date any kind of. Like you just got you got to be do better, you know. You got to believe in yourself, you know. <laughs> when you date white, when you date white, you got to, you know. Like I'm not date. I refuse to date a white dude that doesn't have privilege, you know. Hooking up with white guys that don't have privilege is like robbing an empty ATM. Like that's very pointless, you know. I mean, but I'm not. One thing I'm not gonna do. I'm not. I'm not bottoming for white men. Not in this. Not in this climate. I'm not. I'm treating my body like a bus in Montgomery in 1962. <laughs> Whites to the front, and you niggas get in the back. <laughs> I'm the Rosa Parks of homosexuality. <laughs> I don't know. You know. Sometimes I'll date a white dude and he'll be so miserable and so broke and so unprivileged that I'll look at him and I'm like, you know, I just could have got another nigga for this. <laughs> like dating two, two black dudes, I believe in black love, but after a while it just becomes exhausting. You know, we both commiserating over problems we both can't help each other solve. You know, when I date a white dude, it just feels like I'm going on vacation. <laughs> you know, that's why I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, Meghan Markle. Pff, I was getting sick of that. I'm so glad she's not in the news anymore. Thank you, Rona. Every day, something was about Meghan Markle. I'm like, I'm not impressed by that. If you're somebody that dates outside of your race frequently, you should not be impressed by that. That wasn't nothing new. Do you know how many wealthy white families I've infiltrated and dismantled? I had an ex of mine call me during the quarantine and reveal to me that they were gonna transition into becoming a woman. And that news caught me off guard. Um, but I responded to it very honestly. I said, good for you. I'm very proud of you, but you cheated on me. So I'm gonna talk shit. <laughs> you know, I'm not transphobic, I'm just petty as fuck. That's a big difference. <laughs> You know, you cheated on me. You can't dish the scene of a crime and expect some sex change to make me forgive you. <laughs> Unless your name is Caitlyn Jenner. That's obviously the rule, right? <laughs> and look, look, somebody's transition, it is not about me. But in this case, I'm gonna make it about me. <laughs> Cause I just think something was taken from me. I don't know what kind of boyfriend I would have been to somebody transgender. And I just don't appreciate the opportunity of finding that out being taken away from me like that, you know? Like, my favorite game is Pokemon. I love that game. And if my strongest Pokemon just escaped from me while it started evolving, I'm gonna be pissed off about that. <laughs> just out of confusion, like, really? You motherfucker, you just gonna live your best life now without me? That's what you're doing? So when you were with me the whole time, you were just being some level two lazy ass Charmander all these years? <laughs> then you leave me. Now you're a holographic Charizard. <laughs> I deserve better than that, you know? And surprise, I know I look one way, but I had a gender crisis when I was younger. I was confused about some stuff. You know, my mother used to leave me at home a lot when I was young, like suspiciously a lot, you know? It's like, ma'am, that is not how abortions work, you know? <laughs> but she would leave me at home and I would do what every kid would do and I would go and snoop around in her closet and I would see a blouse hanging up and I would throw the blouse on her and I would check myself out in the mirror like, this needs something else. And I would go over to her dresser and I would put on some jewelry and I would go back into the mirror and I would look at myself like, bitch, how dare you come out here without shoes? And then <laughs> I would see a pair of heels on the floor. I would put both feet in the heels and I would look at myself one last time like, all right, okay, I don't like this but I'm a bad bitch. You know? <sighs> what am I up here really? Like, I'm just up here. I'm just so glad to be here, you know? Like, I'm, I, I'm glad that I'm able to get up here and perform. And just for this, this number of people, I miss comedy where it used to be, man. I want this to be over with so we can go back to doing what we used to do and just being closer together and laughing together. Just the energy was just so much different. You know, I miss the bad comedy shows. That's how much. <laughs> That's how much, I miss the bombs. I did a show once where the, uh, this guy in the audience tried to boo me off the stage. But this old black lady sitting behind him got up and said, no nigga, boo you, that faggot is funny. <laughs> and I didn't know what the fuck to do with that. 
because I have been greatly insulted, but fantastically fucking flattered at the same time. I went up to her when that show was over. I was like, ma'am, was that you that called me a faggot in the middle of the show? And with impunity, she was like, yeah, baby. <laughs> so I was like, miss, I gotta ask you a question. May I buy you a drink? <laughs> I can't afford to lose any fans, fuck that, you know? Have a great night.